So the second way of identifying outliers uses the mean and standard deviation. Now, the way to do it with the mean and standard deviation is you are looking at anything that is less than the mean take away two lots of the standard deviation and anything that is larger than the mean plus two lots of the standard deviation. Now, if you are studying OCR MEI, then you would be using SX here, the sample standard deviation. Okay, so just so we're clear. So, this is how we can find outliers. Now, you might be wondering, well, in which case should I use which? Because we've had uh, the lower quartile take away 1.5 times the interquartile range and upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range from the previous video. Now we've got a second way of doing it. Uh, how can I tell when to use which? It's really down to the question. Um, if you have been asked, if you've been asked to find the mean and standard deviation previously, or you've been given that, then and then you're asked to find, determine if there are any outliers, then use that. Um, if you've been asked to find the median and quartiles and the interquartile range from the previous question, and then you're asked to find outliers, identify outliers, then use that. Okay, that's that's really the only way that you can really work with it. Or if you've been given like a, a box plot, box and whisker diagram, and then you're asked to, find, to determine if there are any outliers, then uh, you would of course use the quartiles version. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I, I would also probably suggest that if you had been given um, a group frequency table, continuous frequency table like this, uh, then, it would be easier to find the mean and standard deviation from that because your calculator can immediately tell you. If you had to work out the quartiles, uh, then you would have to use a li linear interpolation and that will take more time. Okay, so it's really down to reading the question and what, seeing what it's asking. Uh, right, so I'm going to go straight in with this. So here is my six bits of data, and I need to find the mean and standard deviation. I'm going to go straight to the calculator with this. Uh, no messing around. So menu number six, we're on the Casio class whiz here. Uh, number one for one variable. Now just type in the data, 10, 15, 35, 40, 45, and 95. Uh, then... Option number three. So what are we getting? So we've got a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 27.6887421. I'm just going to write out full calculator display um, so that I can get these results as accurately as I can. So then what I want to do is I'm going to go back to the main computation bit on your calculator, and then I'm going to do 40 take away two lots of 27.6887461. So that gets me minus 15.4 to 3 sig fig. And then I can just scroll back, turn it into a plus between the 40 and the two times, and I get 95. 0.4 to 3 sig fig there. So using the mean of standard deviation, um, I'd be looking at any values less than minus 15.4, which there aren't, and any values that are larger than 95.4, which there aren't. Okay, so um, using the mean of standard deviation, I have not picked out any outliers. You'll notice that in the previous video, I used precisely the same numbers, and I picked out 95 as an outlier using the quartiles. The quartiles method will likely make more sense for a discrete set of data, um, especially if you're looking at uh, maybe wages of employees in their thousands. It would make more sense to pick out the 95,000 uh, pound a year salary as an outlier um, 
whereas this method for mean of standard deviation, which is often used for continuous data, will not pick it out. Okay. Let's have a look at the second example here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go straight to the calculator to find the mean of standard deviation. Okay. So um, number six, uh, we want to go to one variable. Make sure you've got your frequency column here. If you don't have your frequency column, uh, then shift menu to go to the setup. Scroll down to get to statistics, number three, and then frequency on, number one. Okay, The frequency column should now appear. So we want to put in the midpoints as the x's. So we'd have 25, then we'd have 60, then we'd have 75, and then 90. And then for the frequencies, we've got 2, 7, 20, and 11. Press the AC button, option number two. So we get a mean of 74 and a standard deviation of 15.00833102. So very close to 15. OK, so going back to the main computation bit on the calculator. 74, take away two lots of 15.00833102. Gets me 43.98. So I'll put it as 44.0 to 3 sig fig. And then change the minus foot plus 104.0 to 3 sig fig. Right, OK. So for this, uh, I'm identifying no outliers. Uh, that are greater than 104 because we know that grouping goes up to 100. So there's definitely nothing larger than 104. There could be something smaller than 44. I know that there are two data items between 0 and 50, but I don't know where they are. So all I can say is that there could be uh, up to two uh, outliers for this data set, but that's definitely not guaranteed.